Okay, I think uh, everybody, it's uh, probably the right time to start. So first of all, uh, happy Easter, everybody, uh, and this glorious Feast of the Resurrection. Uh, welcome to everybody. A special welcome to the Reverend Martha Rogers, a priest in charge of Emmanuel, who has been following us on Facebook, but now is joining us on Zoom, and also to her husband, Dave. So welcome, and uh, it's great to have you with us. It's been a strange Holy Week, and in some ways it's going to be a strange Easter day. Um, no flowering of the cross uh, and, and other things that we do. Um, uh, if, if those churches that, you know, when I'm with you for Easter, um, to make sure that we don't suddenly light this big candle as though it's dropped down from heaven. I adapt the exalted uh, for data. I'm and sing the exalted. Some of you will be pleased that you're delivered from my rendering of the exalted, but um, we, we're missing out lots of things of our uh, usual Easter celebration. But at the heart of the feast, nothing changes. So it is the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that, that is what we are celebrating this morning. So I'm going to ask Ray to begin for us. <laughs> Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people, peace people on, on earth. earth. Lord God, God, heavenly King, 
Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who hears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Give thanks, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely and he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted and he will rejoice and be glad in it. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever.
The second reading from the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that, that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cyphus, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them Though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me, whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so we have come to believe the word of the Lord. Let him. 
Is there a way to unmute her? You have to, in the lower left-hand corner, there's a mute button, Martha. No, not working. Try holding your space bar down. There's no way I can override it, unfortunately. Hi, everybody. Sorry for that. Dave just gave me his tablet. Can you hold this for me? I can't see myself. Dave's trying to get me on his tablet. Can you hear okay, me? We can, we can hear. Okay, Dave's trying to get something. I am so sorry about this. Can I read the gospel for you right now? Yeah, go ahead. It's no worries. This is this is Zoom. Yeah, read the gospel. Yep, and stuff happens. Well, a reading from the gospel of John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and she went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in, and he saw the linen wrappings laying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and he went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings laying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus's head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Our churches are empty. On Easter Sunday of all days, we gather together today for worship on Zoom. This is my first time meeting with you and I'm on Zoom. Who would have ever predicted that that could happen? Electronic worship? 
it's odd for me and I'm sure it's odd for all of you. You know, there was no planning this year to meet and pray together. I used to complain about the overwhelming smell of Easter lilies on the altar most Easter's but there's no Easter lilies on the altar for us this day. There's no joy at shouting hallelujah together. And the incense, I get it at Christmas and Easter, and I'm missing it today. COVID sure doesn't allow us to have much control over anything anymore. And if you're like me, I'm muttering and I'm fussing about everything that used to be. I yearn for worship in person. I yearn to pray with you in person. I yearn to receive holy communion together. So I mutter and I fuss and I spend these days with too much time thinking about what you and what I have lost. What life used to be like. I think too much about how you and I have to settle for everything that's different now because everything is different. There's too many changes too often. And normality for us as we used to know church feels like it's becoming a fainting memory. Our churches are empty. Our churches are empty. And so is the tomb. So is the tomb. But that's not what Mary of Magdala was expecting when it was still dark and she came to the tomb. That's not what the disciples were expecting when they ran to check if what Mary had reported was really true. Cloths, linen cloths, that's all they found, all nice and neatly folded and rolled up linen cloths. But there was not a body. Their leader, the person they had devoted their life to these last years, their rabbi, their teacher was killed three days ago and his corpse was put into this tomb. It was witnessed. But, but where is it? The tomb, as we know, was empty. The tomb, what? Well, no. Wait a minute. The tomb, um, the... Uh, I got to ask, was it really empty? Well, the guys, those disciples we know went home and Mary in her grief and probably in her confusion over the missing body couldn't move. They had taken away my Lord, she said. They have taken away my Lord. So crying and weeping, probably frozen to the spot, she stayed behind at the tomb. And it was then that she saw those white clad figures, um, angels probably, scripture says. It was in the emptiness of the tomb and of her heart that they comforted her. It was there in the emptiness when she saw the gardener or who she thought to be the gardener. It was there in that emptiness that she heard that voice his voice, say her name. And she knew in the depths of her heart and soul when she heard her name, she knew. She knew. She knew that you just can't keep a good man down. Years ago, I guess what, 15, 20 years ago, I heard a sermon on a program called Day One and it was given by George Mason. And the image he gave me in his sermon has stayed with me all these many years, and I want to share part of it with you. Mason said that nothing really ever kept Jesus down. He probably climbed out of the manger when he was a baby, and he went trapping about the town. And scripture tells us that at age 12, he slipped away from his parents when they were visiting the temple and causing his mom and dad to go searching for him. And when he got older in his ministry, when you expected to him to be in the temple where any good rabbi probably would have been, you'd find him in the desert praying or on the hillside teaching, or for sure we know he was hanging out with prostitutes, uh, tax collectors, other sinners on the wrong side of town. It's always hard in scripture to figure out where he might turn up next. Mason said that all Easter does is to make that, trying to figure out where he turns up next, make that for all eternity. You see, Christ is on the loose now. 
Christ is on the loose and there's no pinning him down. There's no holding him back. Christ is on the loose. And if the grave couldn't hold Jesus, then nothing could or can. Mason finished his sermon those years ago by saying that every time we think we have hold of Jesus, he won't stay long because he has places he wants to take us and experience this. He wants to share with us and he has people he wants us to meet and he has resurrections he wants us to go through. Jesus is free of the grain and he's roaming at large in the world. He will not be confined ever again. He is on the loose. And now it's our challenge. It's up to us to pursue him, to pray with him, to watch for him, to wait for him, to live with him. Christ is on the loose in order to loosen us from every grave we find ourselves in, from every grave we make for ourselves. Easter doesn't return Jesus or us to the past, to the way things have been. Instead, Easter gives us a new reality, a way forward, right in front of our eyes, beginning right now, right this very minute. The resurrected Christ is up and about to call us out of all those false confidences, out of all those personal ways that become graves for ourselves. Christ is on the loose, calling you to hope and to not fear, calling you to open yourself up to and to participate in this new reality we find ourselves, you find yourself in. We can spend too much time yearning and missing and muttering and fussing about what has changed, what is different. And like Mary, we need to weep and lament and grieve which has been lost to us, what has been changed. Like Mary though, we cannot stay or live in that space. Like Mary, we can run to others. And more importantly, like Mary, we are to open ourselves, our real selves in the very spot we find ourselves in. Imagine, Imagine that we are to open wide in order that we may embrace and invite in that which we find ourselves in today, that which is new and strange, but holy and good. All of this with God's help, of course. So I ask you to look carefully at your days. Look carefully at your attitudes. Look carefully at what you carry deep inside you. And know besides all the muttering and grumbling, God's grace is still always there, always sufficient, always bringing new life and new experiences and allowing us even in our emptiness, even in our unwelcomed circumstances, even in the graves we make for ourselves, God's grace is there. And God's grace enables us to receive the yet-to-be-revealed life. The yet-to-be-revealed re life which God is already gifting and redeeming and resurrecting for us, for you. God is already there, loving for you and for me, right here, right now. In small ways, in larger ways, today, tomorrow, and Tuesday, and Friday, and every other day you breathe, there is always sufficient, abundant, and resurrecting grace. Always. Because of the empty tomb, life for Mary and the disciples was unrecognizable once they saw that the tomb was indeed empty. Life for them was never the same since for them or for us. Because of the empty church, our lives have not been the same way for too long now. Easter comes once again to remind us differently though. Easter comes again to remind us that resurrection is a reality daily and eternally. If only we were to go there. 
If only we go to what I call that Easter place deep inside each of us, the unwelcomed place where emptiness and hurt and confusion and pain and loss, if we go to that empty place like Mary did, and we stay there like Mary did, we would be there to open wide the possibility of what was coming of the resurrection gifts that we are given. Like Mary, our lives, our soul will look different. They may be unrecognizable at first. They may be uncomfortable and confused at first within us. But by doing this, by going into ourselves and opening up that tomb, it will be holy. Holy living and thinking and spirit-filled newness. For nothing, nothing can ever take away our Lord. Isn't that the truth of Easter? Nothing, even when we get in the way, nothing can ever take away our Lord. So, hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, hallelujah. In fact, I want you to stay, say that with me out loud right now, wherever you are. Let's say it together. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. That means Christ <laughs> is on the loose for you and for me. And for that, I say, thanks be to God. And hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Join in with me if you have your book of common prayer and turn to page 358 and let us together affirm our beliefs in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We, we believe, believe in, in one Lord, Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only Son of God, God eternally God, 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 God from God, light from light, from light true God from, from true God, God begotten, not made, made of one being, being of the Father. Through her all things were made for us as and from our salvation. He came down, down from, from heaven. By the, by the power, power of the Holy Spirit, and became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and Pontius Pilate, suffered death, death, and was buried. On the third day, he was dead, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord who is the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has lived and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We, we believe in one holy, Catholic, Catholic and apostolic church. church. We, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We, we look for the, the resurrection, resurrection of the dead and the, the light of the world to come. Amen. Amen. As the greeter of Emmanuel Church for, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 years, uh, Holy Week was always a week in darkness that together we sat in church and enjoyed our services and sermons and uh, got to the point where Good Friday, the last thing we did was carry the cross out, lean it up against a tree and stood there in silence in the darkness. So when Easter came, the excitement was back again. Yes, the Lord has risen. And being on Zoom, it's so difficult to feel that. And we're 
trying to find those ways. And Martha helped us this morning with reviving and, and getting the spirit up. We have more light. Jesus is with us all the time in our hearts, in our mind. And we have so much to be thankful for. Mm. So even though we may not be in church and I may not be greeting people in all the beautiful clothes and dresses and suits and smiles that people have when they come in church, it's still there in our hearts. The memories are still there and we will revisit them again and it will be glorious. This morning, I have a prayer I'd like to share with you by Julie Palmer that I've found online and it says loving lord today we remember the veil veil of darkness transforming to the brightest light the most dreadful end becoming the most beautiful beginning we remember with trembling hearts the deaths of despair fading to reveal hope everlasting the curse of death defeated by eternal life Today, we remember with thankfulness your willingness to be pierced for our sins. We sing with abundant joy of your miraculous rise from death's tomb to resplendent life. Thank you for the promise of heaven and your generous invitation of eternal life for all. Amen. Amen. <laughs> asked me to look for an Easter story to share with you. So I have one. And it says, one Easter, a priest and a taxi driver both died and went to heaven. St. Peter was at the pearly gates waiting for them. Come with me, said St. Peter to the taxi driver. The taxi driver did as he was told and followed St. Peter to a mansion. It had everything you could imagine, from a bowling alley to Olympic-sized pool. Oh, my word. Thank you, said the taxi driver. Next, St. Peter led the priest to a rough old shack with a bunk bed and a little old television set. Wait, I think you're a little mixed up, said the priest. Shouldn't I be the one who gets the mansion? After all, I was a priest, went to church every day, and preached God's word. Yes, that's true, said St. Peter. But during your Easter sermons, people slept. When the taxi driver drove, everyone prayed. Martha, not that yours put us to sleep, so don't <laughs> think that. Our prayer for the people will continue on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer, Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That, that we all may be one. Grant <clears throat> church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your, your name, name may be glorified by the people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That, that our works may find in favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they, they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We ask for our continuing prayers for Scott Robinson, for Mark Perkins and his wife Laura, for Linda who is dealing with chronic illness. We pray for Ethiopia and the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. We need prayers for Deb Albert's granddaughter, Ashlyn, who is having health issues. We also pray for Anne's mother-in-law, who is facing a challenging health issue. We also ask for prayers for 
for our friends Mike and Kathy, for Scott. We ask prayers for our church, for our parishioners, and now for Brian and for Martha joining us. We ask prayers that we can continue on and do the work of God and do the mission that is laid before us and celebrate. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries uh, this week. Uh, we'd want to send some prayers out to the Albert family who will be traveling down to Florida for safe travels and return back to us. We give wonderful thanks again for Martha and for Brian. We also give thanks for the work that is still being done at our churches during this COVID time. We have at Emmanuel, uh, Catherine and Bonnie and her son, we have delivered since the COVID pandemic started, two tons of food. Over two tons. Over two tons of food. So our mission continu continues, our love continues. And we pray for those who are actually putting themselves on the line and doing the work. Um, Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Eucharistic prayer this morning is Eucharistic prayer D. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only son to be our saviour. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfil your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death, 
and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took the bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you. And we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. James and St. Andrew and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honour and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, for ever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. We keep now a moment for our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you at the altar in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me through your grace. Let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and the life to come. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And may God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, now give you joy and peace in your faith. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us forever. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is risen today. go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Oh, thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 alleluia.